All right, cam remove. So conceptually, what the cam remove do node does is it, it activates other nodes. So in this case, it's activating this gate and saying, open the gate. Um, but when the node itself is activated, and this is only visible in the level editor, when the node itself is activated, say by a button push, this button activates that camera move. Then wherever the player is, the player's here, they shoot this button, the game pauses, the camera slides over here, then this node activates, which will open this gate. Um, when the gate opens, it activates this dialog. And then after a second or so, the, the camera slides all the way back to the player. And then the game unpauses, control returns to the player and they can go on with their life. Uh, let me show that in action real quick. Because I added a bunch of effects as well. And I want to talk about those a little bit too. Right. So you saw the uh, the effect, the camera move, the uh, laser gate opening, the dialogue happened. <clears throat> And that's because this button is connected to this. It activates the camera move. The camera moves. The camera activates the, this camera move node activates the gate. The gate activates the dialogue. And so it all happens in a neat sequence. <clears throat> so how did I do that? A couple of things. It's actually not wasn't that complicated. Um, so in Godot, when you pause the game, it pauses the entire scene tree. And every node in the game has a property called pause mode, <clears throat> which tells that node how to behave when the game is paused. If the, if the scene tree is paused, then do this, right? So in this case, this particular node says process, which means if the game is paused, just keep doing what you're doing. The other options are pause, stop, or inherit, which means do what your parent does. So you can have nodes within nodes within nodes. This one is set to process. This one is set to inherit. So this one will do whatever this one does, right? And this one is also inherit. So this one will do what this one does, and this one will do what this one does, which is process. So all of these nodes will process. Uh, and there are certain nodes in the game that do that. And the, uh, the thing that's tricky here is that when the camera move starts, the first thing it does is it gets all of the nodes that are overlapping this, um, uh, where is it? This activation area, right? This, act, this screen shaped and screen sized area 2D is the activation area. So this covers the entire screen of wherever that node is, and then the camera moves directly there. So this covers the whole screen. When the camera, before the camera moves, it finds all the things in that area and changes their pause mode to process. Then it pauses the game. So the effect of that is that everything in the game pauses except those things that are near this camera move node. Oops. Uh, which is um, in this example. In this example, it would be the gate, the and the dialogue here, and these walls. <clears throat> they would their their pause mode would become process. Then it pauses the game. Um, then it starts this tween. Then this tween just moves the camera out to the uh, camera move node. And it also keeps a variable at the original location. So the whole, all this, this move is, is triggered by that signal. 
And when that happens, it starts an animation player and the animation player uh, kind of orchestrates the whole thing. So there's a move animation. And the animation player calls start move, which is this method we were just looking at. In the middle, it calls activate target, which emits a signal saying this thing is being watched. Uh, it activates the move back, which is another tween. And then it activates finish move, which resets things back to kind of the way they were, unpauses the game, that sort of stuff. Uh, it also plays some audio clips. And it it animates the opacity and visibility of a couple of different animation or uh, textures. These are full screen textures. One is a vignette uh, that just covers the whole screen. It's these dark corners here, like that. And then the other one is, is this scan line thing, which are, it's a shader. Um, I'm not gonna get into the shader, but it's a shader. Uh, there's a full screen texture and then a, a f not a complicated shader, but it's a shader. There's a lot of math in here that just basically makes this fuzzy. Um, and because it's all on an animation player, I can change the opacity and visibility of those things. So as the move starts, that fades in, the sound starts to play. The camera starts moving because it called this and there's a tween in there that does the move. Then it gets here about halfway, activates the target and that causes uh, this signal, this watched signal to fire, which activates this laser gate. Uh, then the animation keeps going and then it starts calling move back, which animates another tween to go back move the camera back to the original place, it plays a sound again. And in case you didn't know, Godot's uh, animation player can play audio clips. And then it starts fading out the overlay stuff. And the camera should be back to where it was at the beginning. And then it calls finish move. Uh, which is here. So this just, again, just it's the pause mode back for each of those entities over here. When I change the pause mode, I keep a ref or I keep a copy of what the original pause mode of that thing was and then change it to process. And then here at the end, I look up what that saved pause mode was and I put it back, uh, unpause the game, emit a signal for other nodes that this thing is finished and it's done. The trick, well, there's, I mean, so that's it. Uh, the main thing that was causing me trouble when I was first doing this was I was doing these in the wrong order. <clears throat> I was pausing the tree first, like this, and then doing this stuff. But some of this stuff doesn't work if the game is paused. This doesn't work in particular. So you need to do that first, then pause the game. Makes sense in hindsight, but it, it was causing me problems in the beginning. Um, right. So that's the code. And then, the, so there's just a bunch of little things, right? Like, um, this overlay, uh, was something that I felt it needed just to show that it's kind of like, it's like a transmission from your mothership to the player, letting them know that this camera move, it's not something they're in control of. It's something different and unique. Um, Right, this whole thing, this whole overlay here. Um, it plays a sound. It actually plays two sounds. There's a uh, uh, kind of a wow, and then there's a whoosh, whoosh right there, and then another whoosh, whoosh when the camera moves back. Uh, there's a tween here and here that fire, and those use uh, some easing and um, cubic and in and out easing so that they're they kind of start slow and end slow but they're fast in the middle so it's kind of a smooth like whoosh uh, for each one um, yeah so there's a lot that goes into this 
but the effect ends up being you know i mean it's nice i like it but it's it's fairly i don't know i'm hesitant to say simple but to a player that seems fairly simple i think anyway and that's how i did uh that's how I did the cinematic camera move node. Oh, and then there's also, <clears throat> when you're in the editor itself, there's an icon. There's the icon for the entity chooser, and then there's the in-game entity itself, which only shows up in this level editor. And I can have multiples of these. Um, I could, I could, you know, have, Another one over here. Maybe that one gets triggered at a different time. <clears throat> one thing I can't do is I can't chain these because if this activated a second one, then you'd have two nodes fighting for control of the camera at the same time. Um, that was a feature I was thinking of adding, but I, I don't think so. That would enable you to do things like move here, then show this, then show this, then move back which might be interesting. I don't know. I, I want to get this into some levels first and see. Um, but that's the core idea. Camera move. Took a couple days to do, but I think it's going to be worth it. And I'm going to go back through some of the original levels and work it in now.